The first time I had a gout attack was that time we were walking in JB. At the end of the trip, my leg hurts very bad. We initially thought the cause of it was the new pair of shoes, which wasn't like running yet. After sending me back, he said, yeah, it's probably the shoe. So he sent me back with painkillers. About three days later, the swelling subsided. Subsequently, every time the attacks was the same. Looking back, that's probably one of the signs that uh, it has nothing to do with the new pair of shoes. I used to do a lot of sports, cycling, badminton, squash, tennis, table tennis. I had to give all that up in my mid-30s, I guess, yeah. Because the gout was getting too bad. I had one attack every month or every three weeks. It's not like when you move it, uh, then it's painful. It's especially painful at night when you sleep. You can feel a heartbeat beating at that particular joint. And every beat of the heart, it goes pom pom. It's like you can feel the pain that goes da 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 da. Yeah. Patients who have gout attacks may have high uric acid. Uric acid is a waste product. Two-thirds of uric acid is made by the body itself through cell turnover, and less than one-third comes from food. Food that may trigger gout attacks include food with high purines, as well as lesser-known triggers such as high sugar. Patients who have gout may experience pain, swelling, redness, and warmth in the affected joint. During a, an acute gout attack, this may be so bad that the patient may struggle to walk. Go up and down the buses, you know, it's too painful. So, so simple things like going up the staircase of a bus. Uh, going up is not so bad. Uh, coming down is a big problem. Hi, Mr. Sia. Come on in. Thank you. Sit down. Hello. How have things been in the past six months? Yes, great. Great. Yeah. Uh, I've printed out your blood test this time, yeah. and uh, your uric acid is lovely. It is at target as uh, expected. Great. What about your lifestyle? Yeah. Are you managing to keep up with your exercise? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since we uh, started my treatment, mm. I was trying to go back to my active lifestyle. Okay. All right. Uh, that's, that has been great. Okay, so you playing badminton? Picking up my, yeah, my, my badminton again. Big fine. Riding, yeah. Super. Okay, that's the whole point of you taking medicine, is to ensure that you can continue living the life that you want to live. Yep. Okay. Um, one day, I had a phone call from my colleague from orthopedics uh, telling me that uh, Mr. Sia had uh, had a motorbike accident and fractured his wrist. My colleague was very surprised when I said, Oh, that's wonderful. Actually, what I meant was not that it was wonderful that Mr. Sia had fractured his wrist, but it was wonderful that Mr. Sia, who, when he first came to see me, was in a wheelchair, could, after a year of therapy, um, ride his big bike and be living the life that he has always wanted to live. It's like a tank of water. And the uric acid is like the water in the tank. In our bodies, there is a balance between uric acid production as well as uric acid excretion. In fact, in most people in Southeast Asia, they inherit a gene that means that the drainage pipe is very, very, very much smaller in people with gout compared to people without. Consequently, the water level in the tank in somebody who has a family history of gout may be a lot higher than somebody without a family history of gout. In order to reduce the uric acid burden in the body, you can either increase the drainage or use medications to reduce the production of uric acid. Allopurinol and febroxostat are two examples of medications that you can be treated with that help to reduce the production of uric acid. Medications to increase drainage of uric acid 
can be taken if you do not have a history of kidney stones and if you are able to take lots of water to help to flush the excess uric acid out of your system. Some of these uh, factors may include things like poor adherence to medications. Number two could be poor diet uh, restrictions, particularly high purine diets, which is diets that contains uh, red meat, shellfish. We also tell patients to uh, avoid alcohol and high sugary beverages. Comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease or chronic kidney disease can also impact patient's uh, recovery. For patients who has already with multiple chronic renal disease, cardiovascular conditions, diabetes or hypertension, they may already be on a lot of uh, oral medications. So with the additional of uh, gout treatment, they may add uh, peer burdens to the patients. They tend to have a lot of other hospital um, clinic visits. Patients tend to prioritise uh, gout management or gout clinic as the lowest in the priority. They tend to miss their appointment with us. As such, we often stress to the patients that um, taking the medications regularly and uh, see us regularly. Mr. Xia was very afraid of uh, potential unwanted effects from treatment of gout. Um, due to some misinformation that he had had. As such, I reassured him that we would be supporting him in his treatment journey. She explained to me what were my concerns uh, taking certain medications. So it was a very, uh, I would say, fulfilling, uh, very enlightened kind of experience. Rheumatologists uh, throughout the nation have been working very hard to try and improve the understanding of gout both amongst physicians generally uh, as well as um, in the community. We do outreach programs um, to uh, primary care doctors as well as uh, talks for patients in order to try to improve the understanding of gout and to reduce misinformation.